Welcome to Stuff Lab, I'm Gwen. And I'm Marty. And today we are doing a suggested video by Spur Tar Herc. They said, facts about Juan Luis Guerra. That's uh, how I think the name is said, I'm not really sure. But that's what we're doing today. I had never heard of this person. They're incredibly interesting. Are you? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Uh, you may notice that we changed up our set a little bit from the facts videos. It's now like our regular Wednesday videos uh, because we rearranged some junk and it's just more convenient this way. So there we have it. All right, you ready? Yeah. All right. I'm also excited that I don't need to move the table every Monday and Wednesday anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Homeland! Uh, where do you think? The Mr. Spain. Uh, Spain? Just going off the last name. Or I guess the whole name. Very Spanish to me. Uh, it is very Spanish. Uh, he's actually from the Dominican Republic. About there-ish. Okay. Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Uh, I have never been. I hear it's nice. <laughs> and if you can't see it, it's uh, right there. <laughs> Ah, in case you missed it. <laughs> that one. So this is Mr. Guerra. Oh, I thought we were. I thought it was gonna be like a like a old timey guy. Oh no, he's. Oh, I was gonna say that uh, unless someone did he's, an uh, excellent still... colorized picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they did not. Okay. Uh, Juan is a musician, a singer, composer, and record producer. I like the hat. Is a very cool hat. Uh, he does. Genres of merengue. What is that? Uh, it, hard for me to describe it to you. It's very Latin American, um, also African. Okay. Uh, the general things that he does. Uh, what I think is bacata. Salsa. You know what salsa is? Oh, yeah. And Latin pop. Uh, he can sing, play the guitar, and the piano. So very musically inclined. Very musically inclined gentleman. Cool. So uh, a little about his life. He was born on June seventh, nineteen fifty-seven, which means he's sixty-three. Uh, Juan studied philosophy and literature at the Universidad. Autonoma de Santo Domingo. So, okay. uh, the University of Santo Domingo. Right on. Uh, afterwards, he studied guitar and music theory at El Conservatorio uh, Nacional de Musica de Santo Domingo. So I think that's uh, the National Conservatory of Music okay. in Santo Domingo. After that, he moved on to jazz. <laughs> so this guy was definitely looking for what he wanted to do. Yeah, he moved on to jazz composition, graduating in 1982 from Berklee College of Music in Boston. Hmm, okay. So he's gone a few places, yeah. picked up some picked up some great skill. Yeah. Going places. Uh, returning to the Dominican Republic, he released his first album in 1984, uh, along with local musicians called Soplando. The group became known as Juan Luis Guerra e 440. So Juan Luis Guerra and the 440. Okay. And it's 440 numerically, not spelled out. Uh, the first album was based on jazz tunes and concepts he learned at Berkeley. Juan is cited as saying it wasn't intended to be a commercial hit. <laughs> However, he began writing more merengues uh, it's a music and dance originating from the Dominican Republic who has Central African origins. See, I knew I had that information somewhere. <laughs> uh, so also in 1984, he was signed on with Karen Records in 1985. He recorded the album that I can't say. 1987 recorded another album, uh, Ministras Mas Los Pianos. Uh, these two albums gained the band even more recognition and were nominated to attend the Festival of OT, OTI, uh, Organization of I Ibero-American Television to represent the Dominican Republic. Ibero-American 
uh, is regions where Spanish and Portuguese are the predominant languages. Okay. Usually former territories of Portugal or Spain. Okay. Never knew that. 1988. Hey, that was a good year. Hey, Juan became the dominant vocals of the 440. This album began the international recognition and sales topped the charts in many Latin American countries. In 1990, 440 released their next album, Bacta Rosa, with sales over 5 million. Juan kept touring Latin America, the US, and Europe. Dang. 1992. Yeah. 1992, Juan released the next album, El Costo de la Vida. 1994, the next album, uh, I don't know how to say this, so I will spell it. Bogarate? Possibly. Avoided controversy as opposed to a different album and focused more on rural and lesser known types of Dominican music. In 2004, after six years, Juan released an album mostly of mostly Christian songs called Para Ti. In 2006, Juan performed at the 60th anniversary of Berkeley. Also in 2006, Juan set records for the highest grossing music tour when he opened for the Rolling Stones, a bigger bang tour in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Dang. So this man opened for the Stones. That right there surprises me that like we've never heard of him. I do not follow tours. I don't follow tours, but like someone opened, especially in like 2006, like the internet was a thing then. <laughs> Mm, he also sang with Sting in 2006. He, he had a very busy 2006. <laughs> yeah, at his concert in La Tomana, also in the Dominican Republic. So, busy dude. Yeah. Busy dude. Historical contributions. Merengue is listed by UNESCO. Do you know who, what UNESCO is? I've never heard of them, no. That is United Nations educational, scientific, and cultural organization. So merengue is listed as... <laughs> yep. <laughs> merengue is listed by UNESCO as an intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Juan is listed as one artist who contributes to this heritage. Very cool. Very cool. Death! Still alive! It always, it always throws me on when I see death on there. Because I'm like... Well... It's really too bad. And then every single time, you're like, still alive. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> well, you know. I guess not every single time. We've definitely done some definitely dead people. There have been some definitely dead people yeah. in, in our time. Yeah. Controversy. So an album released in 1992, the uh, El Costo de la Vida, mm -hmm. uh, was released and clearly as an anti-capitalist message. Other songs in the album protest the poor conditions many Latin American countries and the celebration of the discoveries of the Americas in the song 1492. And they were, the album was very frowned upon by uh, the government. I'm gonna get that. Yeah. So, that was his controversies. Legacy. So these are his awards, quite numerous. So 1990, got a Grammy for Bacta Rosa. 1995. Named BMI, Broadcast Music Inc., Latin Songwriter of the Year, 2005. Billboard Music Award, won two awards, one for Gospel Pop and one for Tropical Merengue, also in 2005. Honored with Latin Specials Award for the Music Academy of Spain for contributions to the music of his country and the Caribbean in the last 20 years. Now we're in 2006. Honored as BMI, Broadcast Music Inc., icon at the 13th annual BMI Latin Awards. 2007, Honorary Lifetime Achievement Award at the Primo Lo Nuestro Awards. Uh, these are all for the 2007 album, La Lave de Mi Corazon, which won over 20 awards, including five Grammys. Oh. Latin Grammys. I was gonna if say. If there needs to be a clarification, these are Latin awards. I was just gonna ask, do, does that, include like our Grammys is a one big thing or is it like do each country do their own? I think each country does their own. Okay. Oh, that's Record of the really year. Long night. <laughs> Album of the year. Song of the year. Best tropical song. Best merengue album. 
The engineers of the album also won best engineered award, best engineered album award. <laughs> this is all 2007. Yep. Dang. Got six premios, Cassandra awards, four billboards, two low Nooster awards, and one additional Grammy. And also an excellence award from Lone Ustro, just in general. Okay. Very good. Yet. Very good singer, then. Or good job, man. I guess. Like, he's just seems like he got <laughs> something, when, everything musical. Very musical to him. Yes. Uh, 2008, at the Los Primos Cassandra, he got Orchestrator of the Year, Outstanding Artist Abroad, and Music Album of the Year. Uh, 2008, he was also named UNESCO Artist for Peace in recognition of his efforts to his efforts for the benefit of children with disabilities and children in need. And in 2009, awarded honorary doctorate from Berkeley College of Music. That is quite the legacy. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely known to it. Fun facts. So this is his name, full name, which I think is Juan Luis Guerra Sias. Not sure. I never took Spanish. I took German. Uh, as Spanish names, the first paternal, father's side, family name is Guerra, so paternal. And the second one is the maternal name. Never knew that. Hmm. Uh, UNESCO sponsors projects that improve literacy, provide technical training and education, advance science, uh, protect independent media and press freedom, preserve regional and cultural history, and promote cultural diversity. It's a little on UNESCO. How many albums do you think Juan has sold? Well, you said the one alone had five million. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say 23 million. 30 million with a net worth of 45 million. Dang. Yeah. Guess what Tali is. Oh God. Um. Here, I will draw him so you know what he looks like. Oh, okay, perfect. Can you draw him next to Shaq? His little hat. I don't know how tall Shaq is. Uh, s seven foot something, I think. I'm not giving you any help. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, oh, ex I needed that for scale. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Five foot two. He is six foot eight. Oh. And... He's uh, a big dude. <laughs> and 79... Uh, is this... Kilograms? Okay. Is, no, I'm asking. Is it kilograms? Yeah. Okay. My brain just went. <laughs> Anyways, so that's what Tali is. This is how much he weighs. Equivalent to 73 and a quarter pixie sticks tall. Well, now I know exactly what it is. You should. <laughs> and 89,172.48 cheese balls. In weight. weight. You can't tell we're American at all. Specifically, Utz brand cheese balls. Why, why don't you guys just use the metric system? Nah. Cheese nah. balls. Cheese balls and pixie sticks. Perfect. What? Do you not enjoy the goofy weights? I enjoy the goofy weights. I do weights. enjoy the goofy I just think it's really funny because other countries give us crap for the fact that we, we just refuse to use metric. And then... I, like, it was a news story. It the was, whole of a size of a washing the, machine? The whole of a size of a washing machine? Be like, nah, we're not going to measure that in, in metric. Well, It's a washing machine. It's <laughs> it's something that people are familiar with in their day-to-day -day lives I, I that they know the funny. size of. Yeah, it's just yeah. funny that we just refuse to use metric. We'll just Let's, use every other form of measurement. I don't think it's re because we're refusing to use metric. I think it's because we're going, oh, this hole is, you know, four and a half feet across by whatever. Approximately the size of a washing machine. So instead of trying to think about that mm. size, you just picture a washing machine and go, that's a big hole. More funny. Anyways, what do you think? Questions? Not really, no. Nah? He did a lot of stuff and he's a very tall man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not wrong. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. I just thought of something. I think it'd be, I think the... The person he'd probably scare the most would be like a like dark back alley jazz competition. 
I don't know, maybe. Wait, like, if, if this dude, as big as he is, like, walked out of the shadows of an alley and, like, you know, challenged you to a jazz contest, you'd be terrifying. Because he's going to kick your ass in jazz. And, I, I and... don't know how often that occurrence <laughs> happens to be worried about it, but... I mean, yeah. if it did happen... <laughs> If it did happen, I would not want to run into him. I see your point. <laughs> We're done now. Bye! Bye!